Hello and welcome OLPH family. Happy Lenten season. I hope and pray that your uh, journey in the wilderness has been a, a good and fruitful one and uh, a time of purging and purification, a time of conversion. And uh, ah, e e Easter is approaching and so it's time to it's time to get, it's time to double down, it's time to go all in um, as we uh, ah, quickly approach the culmination of this, of this pilgrimage, of this journey. I uh, <clears throat> hope you had a wonderful week. This past spring break's been wild. Uh, weather down here in uh, South Texas. <laughs> the gold has just been <laughs> forever. <laughs> so wild. Nothing like a, a spring break cold front front and a just a windstorm <laughs> so uh yeah uh, i hope and, and pray you'll have a good spring break maybe you had to be creative with your your plans and adventures um but yeah uh it was i don't know i found it <laughs> a little bit a little bit humorous so i like, guess hot weather you know in december january <laughs> mid, mid mid to mid, mid to late march <laughs> It's freezing. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, ah, yeah. Hope, so yeah. Hope that, hope that was going well for y'all. Uh, excited for my wife Chelsea. She's been working long and hard uh, uh, to debut her newest and latest collection, um, and so that is uh, less than a week away. This coming weekend, she's debuting the Marion collection, inspired by her blessed mother, Lady Guadalupe, um, and so uh, pretty excited for that. So. Uh, been a lot of, of, of work and effort and it's kind of come into a, a culmination this weekend with a outdoor fashion show and live music and uh, food and a lot, a lot of other uh, festivities. So pretty, pretty excited for that. So anyways, um, let's pray and let's dive in. Um, and so just as Lent is coming to a close, we're, we're, we're reaching the end of the Gospel of Luke and entering into... Uh, yeah, into Holy Week, um, and so uh, <clears throat> let's let's do this thing. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Sweet Jesus, we love you. We give you thanks and praise for this day, and oh, we thank you for the many many blessings in our life. We lift up those areas in need of of you, of <laughs> your love, your truth, your light. Uh, lift up those areas that. Um, we keep hidden in the dark, those areas that are in, in the most need of conversion, those areas that we're the most fearful of, of giving completely and totally to you, surrendering to you. I pray for that grace and strength to be more fully and totally yours. Um, and not just in word, but in deed, in truth, in our life, and our actions. We ask these things in your holy name. And we ask this through the intercession of our blessed mama as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. We are in Luke 19, verse 11 and following. Um, and so, yeah, we are quickly ending the Gospel of Luke, and it, liturgically it's lining up quite nicely as we enter into Holy Week. So let's begin. Nin chapter 19, verse 11 and following. As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive kingly power and then return. Calling 10 of his servants, he gave them 10 pounds and said to them, trade with these till I come. But his citizens hate him, sent an embassy after him, saying, We don't want these men to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingly power, he commanded these servants to whom he had given them money to be called to him. They might know what they'd gained by trading. I first came before him, saying, Lord, your pound has made ten pounds more. He said to him, Well done, good servant, because you've been faithful and very little, shall have authority over ten cities. <laughs> and the second <clears throat> came, saying, Lord, your pound has made five pounds. He said, and you are to be over five cities. And there came, saying, Lord, here's your pound, which I kept laid away in a napkin, <laughs> for I was afraid of you, 
because you're a severe man. You take up what you do not lay down, reap what you do not sow. He said, I, he said to him, I will condemn you out of your own mouth, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking up what I did not lay down, reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money into the bank? And in my coming, I should have collected it with interest. He said to those who stood by, take the pound from him and give it to him who has the 10 pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he has 10 pounds. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from him who has not, even who has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who do not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. <laughs> the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> a good, good uh, wake up call, right? <laughs> Just sneak that there right there in the end, and then uh, <laughs> and it ends with killing them all. <laughs> So yeah, we'll, we'll start there uh, with, the, with the, the, the conclusion, verse 27. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. Um, and I think that in this parable, there's, there's, there's I think some, some very powerful verbiage and, and, like, and like reflective questions for us, right? So, so again, starting here, who did not want me to reign over them. Right? Do we desire for God to reign over us? Do we desire him to be Lord of our life? Right? And again, kind of <clears throat> like we, we prayed at the beginning, like, do we want him Lord of our life on that hour on Sunday? All right? You, <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> Have at it, God. Right? But, the, but everything else, don't touch it. Don't touch my Friday night plans. Don't touch my, don't touch my phone. <laughs> don't touch it. Don't touch me and my, my boys and our hangout time, whatever, 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 right? Who did not want me to reign over them. And so uh, a powerful pressing question, right? Do we want God to reign over us um, in, in totality, in fullness, in, in every aspect? Or, or do, we wanna, do we wanna give them just a few crumbs, a few leftovers, a, a small, small slice? And we're like, here you go. You can have that. Do whatever you want with that. But I will take the rest. Um, so, yeah, just a, a powerful question. Do we want Christ to reign over us? Um, and so, yeah, yeah it'll, be, it'll be kind of our, our nearing the end of this Lenten season, right? That, that, that pressing question that Jesus is inviting us to reflect on and ask, right? Um, do we want him to be our king? Do we want him? And, and, and not just the... the the, the words of the crowd caught up in the moment, right? But in the everyday choices of our life, are we willing to let him reign over us to be our king? So that's powerful. Um, the, the, the other thing that I think that stands out is, um, sorry, it's here somewhere. <laughs> uh, found it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Verse 14. Uh, his citizens hated him, sent an embassy after him, saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. And so again, kind of interesting, especially the timing of this, right? In fact, in the very next verse after this is, is Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, right? So we're, we're approaching his passion and death. And so he, he tells them this parable. Um, in Luke's gospel, right, it's the last parable before his entry into Jerusalem. Um, and he says... The, 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 the nobleman's um, going into a far country received kingly power. And while he's gone, he's appointing these people, right, um, to be in charge, right? And they're like, we don't want them, we want you. Um, uh, and yet he's entrusted these men, 
uh, to look after them, right? And so just, um, yeah, just a beautiful foreshadowing of the apostles and the church, right? And there's a part of us that maybe they don't like them. We're like, we don't want, we don't want them. We want you, Jesus. <laughs> um, but, but nevertheless, right, this is Jesus's purposeful and intentional will, right, is to call human beings and, and giving them power and authority and placing them, placing them in charge. Um, and it's messy. Like, it's, it's messy. It was messy for the apostles. <laughs> and they, they were hand-taught by Christ. 2,000 years later, <laughs> the church is still messy. And we're like, well, I just want you, Jesus. But there's this, but that, that's, but Jesus has called us, right, to take part in that mission, right? To not, uh, to not make our faith this, 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 this solely personal, private thing that, that is between me and our Lord. Um, but that it, but that it, that the part of the heart of it is this, is this, is this call to be in the world and to be this leaven, to be this, to be the mustard seed, to be that grain of wheat that grows, that bears fruit, to be, to be like these 10 servants. Um, and so he calls them for it one by one, right? And, you know, there, there's, there's those who produced much, right? And, and then he, he gives, he gives them more. And, and, and then, but then, and then of course, there's the one who was, a, who, who did nothing, right? Um, and, and so it's interesting, right? He said, I, I you know, I, I, <laughs> I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You take up what you do not lay down, reap what you do not sow. Um, and then Jesus, <laughs> the, the nobleman's response, the king's response is like, that should have been motivation for you to work extra hard. <laughs> um, and so it, it's taken away and given to the other. Um, and so just this call <clears throat> in this parable, uh, yeah, oh yeah, again, like, yeah, multi-layered things, but, but, but specifically, specifically, specifically with that, this call to bear fruit, right? Um, each of us has been given gifts and blessings, and um, and there's a call to fruitfulness. There's a call um, to to, to do something <laughs> with our life uh, and, and to, to, to bear fruit. And, and it's different for us, for, e for each of us, and, you know, in different ways, right? But, but, but underscoring all of it is like, are we bearing fruit, right? Are we, are we a blessing? Are, are we a blessing, you know, starting at our homes, our, our spouses, our, uh, our husbands, our wives, our children, our family, our friends, our coworkers, our community, right? Are we bearing fruit, right? Um, and, and and if not, like this this parable is 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 sobering, is concerning. Um, you know, one of the things that just kind of it just keeps uh, stirring and speaking to me is just this 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 uh, this reality that throughout throughout the whole world we're experiencing this plummeting birth rate, um, and through you know I don't you know uh, 30, 40 countries, right. Um, we're having a negative birth rate. Like we're having less kids than <clears throat> than, are, than are dying on a yearly basis, um, and so like we're we're like as a as a as a society as a as a humanity like we're we're like rapidly heading towards self extinction. <laughs> like and it's it's hidden in the moment, right? Because of like increased lifespan and whatever, right? But like but like but like. Like, 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 just it screams out, like, 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 our way, <laughs> like, going back to Genesis, be fruitful and multiply, right? Bear fruit, um, and and so, like, wh what does that say about us as a, as a society, as a, as a civilization, as a community, when like we we can't even bother to to, to have kids <laughs> to pass it on to the next generation, right? Um, and that's just one angle of, of bearing fruit, right? Like, but like, but uh, but. But if we can't even bother to have children to see the gift and the beauty of human life, right? Like, I, I think it's just such an indicative sign of <laughs> that problem and of our, our, our culture and our world. I um, mean, it, it just screams out, like, something's wrong. Like, when, when we're freely choosing self-extinction, <laughs> like, that's, that should be a warning sign. Uh, 
And so, yeah, this is just this call to bear fruit. And like, it's not just physically having babies, right? Um, th that's just one aspect of, um, of, of the Lord's call or like, um, <clears throat> But, but again, I, I can put on a million things, but, but there's this, yeah, there's this need, there's this call to bear fruit in our lives. And, and another thing that's, that's interesting and very sobering is, right, basically Jesus says, your own words have condemned you, right? And it's such a, a powerful, scary line in verse 22. I will condemn you out of your own mouth. And so... You know, so often, like, like you know, the American judicial system, courtroom, right? We can plead the fifth, right? Um, and so the, it's, it's, it's so often it's not our own words that condemn us. It's the testimony of the witness or the, you know, whatever, the evidence, et cetera, et cetera, right? But, but Jesus, <laughs> but there's a sense in which on judgment day, right, the, it's different because Jesus is going to condemn us by our own words roll the tape ah, right and he's gonna call for the witnesses and they're gonna be us right our own words he doesn't need the witness of someone else right he's gonna call forward our very selves and have ourselves testify against us right and that's that's <laughs> that's sobering like that that is a wake-up call right he doesn't need anyone else to condemn us because we we condemn ourselves by our words and our actions, right? If we, sit, we, if we profess something one day on Sunday and then walk out the door and live something else, right? If we say something on our marriage day and then we walk out the door and live something else, if we say something at our baptismal day and walk out the door and do something else, if we say something when we have our child baptized, right? And we swear on their behalf and then we walk out the door and do something else, right? Jesus will <laughs> use our own words to testify against us. Um, and so, is it, again, that's why we're in Lent. It's a call to conversion. Now is the time. Now is the hour. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a heck of a parable, right? And the, the, the timing of that is Jesus is uh, approaching Jerusalem in this culmination, right? So, again, the king's going to be away. He's placing people in charge, right? And, and there's going to be this there's going to be this sense where they, they don't want them. They want the king. And the king says, I, I understand that. But I, nevertheless, I place them in charge. And while he's gone, right, there are those who have done well. And he will reward them and give them more. And there will be those who in fear, right, do not. Um, and then what little they have be taken away. And then there will be the punishment to those um, who, who, who did not want to submit to the reign that Jesus had chosen to establish. And he had them slain before them. <laughs> so, man, Jesus, get you coming or going. <laughs> like, like, whoo. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, what a, what a powerful, powerful call to conversion. And in you know, all these parables, you know, it's obviously reflecting on them thousands of years later. And so we have that, the insight of human history. But you know it's interesting to to have, to have heard those with the ears, with with not knowing what's going to happen next, and how how you hear it, how you would receive it. So, all right, let's read on. Verse twenty eight. When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethage and Bethany at the mount, which is called all of it, he sent two of his disciples, saying, "Go into the village opposite, where on entering you'll find a colt tied." on which no one has ever yet set, untie it and bring it here. If you want to ask you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it as he had told them. As they are untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord has need of it. They brought it to Jesus and throwing their garments on the colt, they set Jesus upon it. And as he rode along, they spread their garments on the road. And as he was drawing near at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees 
So, and, and some of the Pharisees and multitudes said to, the, said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. <laughs> so Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Um, and so a couple of things. Again, <laughs> we'll do what we did last time. We'll start with the end. I love the ending, right? Uh, the Pharisees are so annoyed. They're just... Ah, oh, Jesus is irritated. So he's just ruining everything. And so here he is coming into Jerusalem, to the holy city, right? This this guy who <laughs> deserves death and is a troublemaker and they just can't stand it. And all oh, the people are loving him and they're singing. And he's like, ah, make them throw it up. And Jesus' response, sure, I'll make them be quiet. But then you're going to have the stones crying out. <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I love that line. <laughs> uh, just, just in the sense of like, there's, there's something true about what they are proclaiming, right? Um, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest, right? And so like, like, like they're proclaiming this deep, like this, this deep, truth <laughs> right and, and and so it's it's just it, it's like it's almost like it, this is good like this is necessary like this is it this is like like the time the culmination of jesus ministry right is at hand and so they're crying out and he's like how can how can i silence the the truth how can i how can i silence this um this is who i am this is my identity so uh I love it, right? And I, I think, again, there's something beautiful about when we give praise and glory to God, right? Like, it's fitting, it's right. Like, this is good. You think of here, you think of the, uh, the revelation, the, the images of heaven. Um, and they're, they're, like, they're like, oh, like, this is, this is, this is like, good. Like, this is almost what like, we're made for, right? To give this, this worship to our, 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 <laughs> our all-loving and perfect God. So, I love that. that the other interesting thing is, um, <laughs> many interesting things, but one interesting thing is just, um, the, you know, the, the in, the, in the moment, right, there's, there's, again, there's this truth, right? Um, but, it, but it's a, a, a and, and Jesus, like he 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 knows what's to come, right? And so it's it, it's there's the there's the so often in life, right? There's the there's the the ecstasy and the agony, right? There's the there's the mountaintop experience, and then there's the valley, right? And so there's the there's the sweetness of this moment, right? But 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 the but along with this is is Jesus' passion and death, um, and then his resurrection. Right, and so sometimes we come for the, we come for the mountaintops, but we don't stay for the, <laughs> the, the valleys. We don't stay for the, the, the agony, the suffering, the sacrifice. And so the beauty of our, our, our blessed Lord is His love for us, is a love until the end, right? Through everything, through the through, through the highs and the lows. Um, but but so often, right? We we, we cultivate just this. Like, as long as it's easy, as long as it's a, a triumphant entry kind of day, sure, I'll do it, right? But if it involves betrayal, suffering, humiliation, mockery, pain, can't, right? And so, you know, it, there's so many angles to look at it, but, it's, you know, if you think of it as this image of Jesus the groom, right? Um, and he's coming to Jerusalem, why? To, like, uh, to, to, to essentially marry his beloved. Right, and, and and here his blood is coming out to him and like affirming him and saying, "You're so handsome and you're you're so amazing. We just love you and like, oh, we would do anything for you." Right, um, and, and this is true and this is good, right? But then, but it's, but but, but it, Jesus is, is so like he's there for us in the in the mountaintop. But then, but then too, he's there for us even when it's the chips are down, right? And everyone's turning away. It's no longer cool or popular or trendy. Um, 
and, and it's it's a love that gives the holds nothing back it gives it it's all right and so i i can't help but think of you know our, our marital vows right um in sickness and health for better for worse for richer for poor right um and so jesus jesus gives us, us that gives us that own image right for better and then for worse right he's faithful to us he never betrays his beloved um he's ever faithful and so um just that yeah uh, such a, a profound uh, a witness of what christ is inviting us to but what he has lived by his example other interesting thing from this is is the the parallels between jesus's entry into jerusalem and a another significant figure in the old testament right so you have um We'll, 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 think, we'll focus on one thing. So you notice in verse 38, right? Blessed is the king, right? So it's almost like, a, like there's this kingly element as he's entering into Jerusalem. They're proclaiming his king. You'll notice the, the parallel with the preceding uh, parable uh, of, of Jesus as the noble man gone to receive kingly power. <clears throat> so, um, so this king. So what's interesting in the Old Testament, right? So you have, you have lots of kings, but you have, you have a couple kings that really stand out. Among those are, of course, David and Solomon um, for, for numerous reasons. And so, um, and so what's interesting is that you can find, if you read the account of Solomon becoming king and you, you compare it to Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, um, there's, there's like this near perfect parallel. <laughs> it's like kind of crazy. Um, and so, um, which is interesting, right? Because for the Jewish people, do you accept Solomon as your king? Well, yeah, because He's, he's, he's one of your greatest. He's on the Mount Rushmore, right? He would have been the greatest if it weren't for his downfall uh, at the end of his life, which uh, we won't go into that. Whatever, right? That, but yeah, but, uh, but the temple, the wisdom, the high point, the beauty, the power. Anyways, the wealth, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so, 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 so the Jewish people, right? Solomon, he, you know, he, he, he's, your, he's your goat, right? It's like, Comparing Michael Jordan with LeBron James, it's like, is it David or is it Solomon? <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's, he's your great one. And yet, the way in which Solomon became king and what happens to Jesus here in entering Jerusalem are essentially identical. And so that's interesting because then you have a strong claim to Christ as king in the line of Solomon. So what are those examples? So um, so Solomon, when, when, he, when he becomes king, this is recorded in uh, first Kings chapter one, um, he rides in on a, um, uh, on a, uh, a mule, uh, which is interesting because he, he doesn't ride in on a, uh, a horse. So a horse symbolizes war, symbolizes like the king as this, um, is the commander in chief. Um, and so he rides in on this mule and, and then especially like not just here in Luke's gospel, but like you take the accounts and the four Gospels together, right? Um, you'll, what's interesting is that Jesus also rides in not on a horse, right? He rides in on a, on a donkey, on the colt, the foal of a donkey. Um, and so they, they both ride in on beasts of burden, um, the farm animals. They're going to haul your, your plow, your cart. Uh, and so kind of whereas the horse symbolizes war, right, symbolizes this time of peace. And so Solomon is this king of peace in which he made love, not war. <laughs> and so here's Jesus who is the prince of peace. Um, so you have that parallel. Um, so another parallel. Solomon rides into Jerusalem to make king just as Jesus rides into Jerusalem. He mentions there in 1 Kings uh, riding to Gihon, which was uh, the name of a spring there in Jerusalem coming from the Temple Mount area. Um, what else? Um, the, the reaction, right? So in, in, in both cases, it's a non-military takeover, right? There's not troops, there's no armies, there's no battles for sure, right? Um, but but there's, this, there's this groundswelling of the people celebrating. Um, and so that's what happens with Solomon and that's what happens here with Jesus. Uh, is this, 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 this tumult, this excitement, this passion. Right, and there's there's no there's it's not being forced. There's no threat of, 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 of war and occupation or whatever. Um, so there's that. 
There's the fact that, and it's even more clear in the other Gospels, um, uh, but, but one of the lines they, they shout is, Hosanna to the Son of David. Uh, and so literally, who is the Son of David? Well, it's, it's Solomon, right? And, and, and for his kings, they're shouting, long live King Solomon. And so here they are 900 years later, and they're like essentially saying the same thing. Um, so there's that. Um, and then also you have the fact that um, uh, before this, Solomon is anointed with oil. Um, and so what's interesting about that is the... Um, in the, is a couple things. So, so, so Solomon's anointed with oil by a priest and, um, in the gospels, uh, you have a couple examples you could point to. You have the, the, the image of, uh, Jesus at baptism by John. It's John, son of Zachariah. Zachariah, right, kicks off Luke's gospel chapter one. He's a priest offering incense in the temple. Um, and so there's that anointing of, by the priest, uh, in, in, in which you have then also God the Father and the, the scent of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, and then also you have um, recorded in the Gospels uh, the anointing of oil, right? The, the woman who takes that costly jar of aromatic nard and she anoints Jesus um, and the fragrance fills the room. Um, and so uh, that also happens right before Jesus entry into Jerusalem. Um, so all those parallels. So anyways, long, long, long story short, right? But one, it's interesting, those parallels. Um, and it's interesting because, right, Solomon, king, great one. Um, and here's Christ, um, who they celebrate as king. And in that whole ceremony, it's this, this kingly proclamation, right? Coming into the, your capital city, being proclaimed as king with peace, not riding a horse, riding a beast of burden. Uh, people saying essentially the same line. Uh, having been anointed with oil, all these things. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so uh, powerful kingly image, especially in light of King Solomon. Reading on verse 41. When he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that even today you knew the things that made for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you and your enemies will cast up a bank about you, surround you, and hem you in, a, in on every side and dash you to the ground, you and your children within you. And I'll leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. And so, interesting fulfillment of this in, uh, in, in 70 AD when Rome will have enough of the Jews and their their rebellions and their trouble and lay waste to Jerusalem. Um, so that, yeah, the, the vine foreshadowing. Verse 45. Um, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you made it a den of robbers. And teaching daily in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people sought to destroy him. They did not find anything they could do for all the people hung upon his words. Okay, um, and so uh, again, Jesus is just <laughs> so annoying for <laughs> the Pharisees and Sadducees and chief priests, the scribes, right? Um, gosh darn it, the people just love him, and so they're trying to find an angle. And it, you know, it, it, it's interesting, right? Like, like, the, like when, when, like, the, the, like those should be signs, <laughs> like when you. I mean, you're doing everything you can to destroy this man and you keep not finding anything. Maybe he's a good guy. Maybe he's a good dude. And so, yeah, sometimes just that we need that reminder in our own lives, maybe where we have some preconceived judgments and decisions. And so we're, we, we read everything through that lens. And, and, and then when, when, when our, when our, our judgments and presuppositions, right? They keep falling short rather than rethink that, right? We keep looking for something else to prove and to justify it. Um, and so um, we, 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 we see them fall into that trap to, to you know, to, to, ter to terrible results, <clears throat> for, especially for them and their, yeah. All right, verse uh, chapter 20. One day he was teaching the gospel 
sorry, he was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel. And the chief priests and scribes and the elders came and said to him, tell us by what authority do you do these things? Or who it is that gave you this authority? He answered them, I also asked you a question. Now tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or from men? We discussed with one another saying, if we say from heaven, people say, why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, all the people will stone us, for they're convinced that John was a prophet. So the answer, they did not know where it was from. Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 I I, I love the traps that they set for it, right? Uh, I think I made this point before, but it reminds me of uh, <laughs> like the Roadrunner and the Coyote, right? Um, and all, all those different tropes of the, you know, the cartoons, right? Where it's the same plot every time. Like, oh, I'll get you this time. Um, and so it's, <laughs> they're like, oh, we got it. We got it. We, we got him this time. And they set the trap and they're like, oh, we lost the game. <laughs> so anyways. Maybe, maybe a little bit of humor there. But, but, but in, in, in a lot of these traps are interesting because, because of, of, you know, Jesus, Jesus, you know, <laughs> not, not only getting out of the trap, right, which is one thing, but so often, right, he teaches the truth and love, but, but, but he also calls on their own conversion, right? Um, and, and so this, right, and, 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 and turning it back on them just shows their own, just sneakiness, right? So they're, they're so bent out of shape trying to, to, to um, punish Jesus, right? To convict him. And, and yet, yet they don't have the courage to say what they truly believe about John the Baptist, right? And like, you know, again, there's that, that fear of the crowd. And so just, just interesting their own weakness. And so, you know, each time they come to make a, a to trap him so they can kill him. And instead each time, they make themselves look foolish, which then probably only further incentivizes the crap. And so it's like, ah, so annoying, so annoying. <laughs> uh, verse 9. And began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and leased it to tenants and went into another country for a long while. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants that they should give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. The tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant. Him also they beat and treated shamefully, sent him em away empty-handed. He sent yet a third. This is the one they, they wounded and cast out. Then the other vineyard said, what shall I do? Ah, I will send my beloved son. It may be they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Let us kill him that the inheritance may be ours. And they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, God forbid. We looked at them and said, what then, what then is this that is written? The very stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. But when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. And so, you know, Jesus and these parables, like, like, what a, what a powerful parable, you know, summarizing the, the Old Testament, their history, um, and just the Father's relentless pursuit of them. Maybe they'll listen to my beloved Son. Um, and so just that invitation as we draw near to Easter, maybe they'll, right? Again, Jesus is once again, the Father's presenting his beloved Son to us. Will we receive him? So that's all we have time for. Let's pause there and close in prayer getting into it man this is it we've been on a long journey through gospel luke and here comes the culmination let's pray in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen lord god we give you thanks for today we pray in a special way that we could embrace your beloved son what a gift and blessing what love do you have for us that you would send it your only son um, to lay down his life for us sweet jesus we thank you for your love may we draw closer to you May we have the courage and strength to allow you to reign over us. We surrender those things that, we're, um, that are farthest from you, that we're most afraid of. We surrender those things to you. We, we, we give you invitation to be, to be king over our life in all things, in all aspects. You are our king and our God. We love you. We want to be fully, totally, wholly yours. We ask this in your holy name. We ask this in the intercession of our blessed mama. 
Mama Mary, bring us closer to your beloved Son, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. May the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll see y'all next week. It's getting good. Keep fighting the good fight. We're almost there. God bless.